In a desperate move to make themselves believe that the whole country has not turned away from left-wing policies, the Liberal government has decided to try to buy your vote. Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. So the other day, Jagmeet Singh went on, I, I did a report on it, a video on it, and he talked about how he wants to take the GST off of items for children and people that are working hard to, you know, meet their bills and get all the things paid. And of course, I pointed out to you that most essentials don't have GST on them already, but they want, see, now remember, the government does nothing, especially the far left, does nothing without targeting a specific group, Right. Now, without the female vote, they can't win. That's what they're telling themselves right now. So they are targeting things that are going to pull on the heartstrings, right? But just remember out there, if you're listening to this and you're a woman and you're telling yourself that they are able to buy your vote, is the second that they get it, they will do exactly what Jagmeet Singh has already done. It'll be just like that guy that promises to call you in the morning, but he never, ever does. It's the same thing. If you want people to be held accountable for their actions, if you want your money to be more money in your pocket, more money in your house, if you want the cost of overall things to come down, then you need to move away from the people that have put all of those policies in place that have caused this to happen. So they, they let it go in two separate press releases. One, they're talking about the GST or the HST. The other one, they're talking about a $250 paycheck for people that are working, that claimed on their 2023 that they were working. That one's called more money in your pocket, which is exactly what they've been trying to say since they introduced the carbon tax. It's just kind of, it's really weak when you go to the store and your prices are through the roof or when most of your money goes on rent. They didn't touch any of the important bills, right? Anyway, now I know regular viewers of this channel are expect me to be sort of maintain my neutrality. But when I see this blatant stuff, I, I see this as a violation of ethics, right? As, and certainly it's, it's underhanded and it's a little bit, Un unscrupulous, unscrupulous. It's not the way that the government should be behaving. If you want to get people to vote for you, then you have to do that in, in their everyday life. Sending them a $250 check is just going to put us more in debt, which of course they're taking directly from the Doug Ford play who had a surplus and in Alberta, they had a surplus. So they decided to give money back to the people, but Ottawa is not running a surplus. They are running the greatest deficit in the history of Canada. And they are just desperate to make you think that a little bit of money. See, the, that's the thing, right? It's rather insulting to think that they can just throw a couple hundred bucks at you and you're all of a sudden going to forget all the hardships that are running through your life, especially the $250 check for the, for the working class, which they say anybody's eligible for if you made 150 net. Net. So imagine where you are on the, on the pay scale if you make 150 net you're probably coming in at least 225 and they want to send you 250 bucks. I guess you can buy yourself and, you know, spend it on lunch or some other meal. But those of us living in the real world, those of us that are in, you know, the 30, 40,000 dollar uh, range, this 250 grand is not really not going to have any impact at all. It, it might f for one minute make the month of April feel like you got a little bit extra money in your pocket, maybe a hundred bucks that you can spend on getting your nails done or getting your hair cut. And I guess what we should be asking ourselves is why is the government not able to make sure that we have our own earnings to allow for us to do that? And then those other earnings can be used towards important things like hospitals and schools, border patrols, opening up this country so that we have room to move. They don't want to talk about all of that. They just want you to be seeing dollar signs and decide that you're going to vote for them. The government can't set prices at the checkout, but we can give Canadians more money in their pocket. Not really, though, right? It's your money they're giving you, so that's kind of weird. To help them buy things they need to save for and things they want, the government announced it will be introducing legislation in Parliament that would provide for you the delivery of a new $250 working Canadian rebate to the 18.7 million Canadians in early spring 2025. Right out of the gate, they're trying to convince you that they're doing everybody a favor, but really, they're only targeting a, a small selection of people. And the reason, of course, that they're doing that is because the people that are working are the ones that are suffering the most under the carbon tax. If you're a, a single mother, stay-at-home mother, or if you're a person who's out, down and out on your luck, you're not doing a lot of things that are involving the carbon tax. But if you're the person doing the 9 to 5 or the you know 6 to 3.30, 
and you're getting up every morning and you're traveling down the road and you got to put the child to the daycare on your way to your shift and then you got to pick up the, the child on your way home then you got to get to the grocery store you got to do all that all that's killing you with the carbon tax and that's the vote that they know they've lost and i tell you all this because i don't want you to think that they're they're somehow doing anything other than literally trying to buy your vote now if you really want to ask yourself is it good for you or not good for you just think of the idea that if they were doing anything that was good for your life, they wouldn't have to stoop this low. They take a look around the world. Donald Trump's decisive victory. It wasn't close. It was decisive. Has them worried in ways that you and I will not be able to grasp. They know that it's over for them. They know that it's a ticking clock. That all they can do right now is desperately hold on and get try to pull out, you know, tricks. It's just tricks. There's no government in sin throwing money at you. But if we were having a surplus, I would say, hey, look, they're doing a good job. But we are not having a surplus. And we are still living in, in, in ridiculously inflated prices. So how can they tell themselves that this 250 bucks is going to do anything? which they want to release in the same month as a GST as you know, that you're just finishing your tax return. Like it's, it's ridiculous to think in your mind that it's anything other than a ploy that they were hoping you'll spend in April so that they can say coming up to the election, Oh, look at how wonderful the economy is looking because it will give it this artificial infusion of this money that you will run around and spend the second that you get it because you're so far in debt because you're a working person. You need every penny that you can get your hands on. And then they'll get their people at uh, statistics Canada to say, Oh, look, we, we, you know, this price is up and this price is up. So the economy is up by 2%. And then they'll try to convince you that your life is not a, a disaster. Never once bringing down the prices to pre-2018 levels or 2017 levels. I mean, they're going to give you this 250 bucks. Then they're going to tell you that the economy is wonderful and you better vote for them. Because if you don't, then you're some kind of an ist. It's the same trick they've been using for years. Now, of course, the other tactic that they released is called the... What did they call it? They had a nice fancy. Oh, no, it was still, this one is the same. The government can't set prices at the checkout, but we can give Canadians more money in their pockets. Again, it's your money, not their money. And they're making, they're printing it. There's no actual money coming in. The money that you, that they collect for the uh, carbon tax, nobody knows where that's going. They say it's coming back, but there are businesses that are paying, you know, in the millions of dollars a year that are not getting rebates. So where is that money going? To help them buy things they need and save for things they want, the government announced it will be introducing legislation in Parliament that will provide two months goods and services, harmonized sales tax, break for groceries and holiday essentials. The government is proposing that the GST, HST be fully and temporarily relieved on the holiday essentials like groceries, restaurant meals, drinks, snacks, children's clothing, gifts from December 14th to February 15th. This tax break will make meaningful difference to Canadians by making essentially all food, GST and HST free, providing relief at the cash register. I like some of these numbers that they show, right? Removing the GST from the qualifying goods for two months will provide an estimated 1.6 billion in re relief in federal tax relief. 1.6 billion, it's not coming into your pocket. A family spending $2,000 on qualifying goods such as children's clothing, shoes, toys, diapers, books, snacks for the house, or restaurant meals would realize GST savings of $100 or more over the two month period. $100, wow, that's gonna change everything. But you see, you have to look at what they just did in there, right? So they're saying qualifying goods, children's clothing, shoes, toys, diapers, and restaurant meals. The truth is that most of those are going to pull on the heartstrings of women. Now, a man will buy his kid's clothes, but he doesn't on his own go to the restaurant. It's just a waste of his money. It's just the, the difference between, you know, the math, the way the minds work. 
all those other things though, any woman out there listening to me, and I know there's quite a few and most of you don't subscribe. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button. They're telling themselves, oh, look, I'll be able to save the GST on that pair of shoes I've been looking at. Yeah, maybe so. My point isn't that you're going to not pay a little bit of federal tax. My point is not to let them pull the blinders over your eyes and buy your vote. Again, they wouldn't need to do this if they had done the right thing in the first place. Now, they're saying to you that they're going to not give you any money, or excuse me, now they're saying to you that they're going to take the money off and you'll save 100 bucks for every $2,000 you spend. Isn't that interesting? Also, they're saying to you that you're going to save that GST on things that are currently dying. People are not spending money on clothing. People are not spending money at restaurants. If you go to the Statistics Canada, you will see that. You will see that the restaurant industry is is getting crushed. And because nobody's buying shoes and clothing, they are the ones that are letting things go at like a very little tiny little markup. Or they're letting things go and then claiming bankruptcy. Because people don't have the money. They can't afford to buy what these things are not essentials. These are luxuries. All these things that he just listed off, that I listed off there are are luxuries. And so you can feel the desperation of them trying to rebuild the economy or at least artificially, right? Because it's not going to work any better than it did when they threw it at COVID because they don't have an understanding of how the economy works. And if they did have an understanding of how the economy works, then they wouldn't be talking to you like this. They would, they would give you a concrete plan that will make your life affordable. This is nothing. This is just a, a, a coupon in the mail is all it really is. If they took the carbon tax off for two months, you might see a little bit of improvement in your life. But they can't do that because the second that they take the carbon tax off, you're going to realize just how much of an impact it's having on your life. And they will never, ever be able to put it back on. So they're trying to give you the smoke and mirrors. I mean, the list of things that they want to, for you to buy, right? Clothing, clothing, hosiery and stretchy socks, right? Hats, ties, scarves, and belts, suspenders, and mittens in all sizes and styles designed for children and babies. What are you kidding me? Children's footwear, diapers, car seats. This is the part that got me kind of laughing. This is how I know what I'm talking about to be true. Print newspapers. I mean, I'm not sure where those are anymore. I think they're pretty much free at the Tim Hortons or something, right in the grocery store at the front. Printed books. A magazine or a periodical purchased individually, not through a subscription. A periodical in which printed space devoted an advertisement of 5% or more. A brochure, a sales catalog, a warranty book, (laughs) or an owner's manual. Like you can't just get the PDF online. A coloring book. It's kind of weird because the dollar store has the cornering on that right now. Corners the market on that. A cutout book, a (laughs) or presso book. A program relating to an event or a performance. So if you go to a hockey game, you know, like that, that'll be, (laughs) I know, I know you're out there, you're sitting there thinking, what, why would we worry about all this print media? Because again, what they're trying to do is make you believe that they're stimulating the economy. And these, these industries are, are dying and they're all controlled by the same six or seven printers. Because they're all controlled by Bell or they're Rogers or they're either media, right? And they got scooped up en masse and then they all did mergers. And the next thing you know, they all have all of these things that are, that are coming into two or three little books. I mean, pick up any book that you have and turn it over and see what house printed it. And then do a little research and find out who owns the stock in that. So because nobody's buying that because they have their little fire tablets and because they can't afford these things. These things are luxuries, right? A guy doesn't go out and buy a periodical Sports Illustrated anymore. They don't do that because they can't afford it. And so they have restaurants, they have kids' clothing, and they have books that they want you to buy that are printed so that they can try to save this media that they have completely trashed. Because in their mind, they can force you to like the product. 
in their mind, it's not that you are sick and tired of hearing their propaganda and you are sick and tired of being preached to and you are sick and tired of being told that you're a bad human being if you don't do exactly what the far left extremists believe you should do it. And if you watch it hour after hour after hour, somehow you're not going to get sick and tired of it. No, no, no. In their mind, you just don't have the money to spend on it. It's absurd. Then, of course, the next one, food and beverages. And if you go down it, it's basically every all the junk food you can think of, which is the only thing that really has any GST on it at the store is junk food, right? So alcohol, non-carbonated fruit juice or fruit beverages added to water, candy, chips, granola bars, lollipops, ice cream, fruit cake, cake, pudding, salad, food, food and beverages heated for consumption. What does that even mean? Can I, I, what, does that mean coffee? No GST on the coffee? <sighs> food or beverages sold at an establishment where it is substantially or all the food or beverage are sold at, currently excluded from zero rating. Example, restaurant, coffee shop, takeout, pub, mobile canteen, lunch and counter, and concession stand, and bottled water. <laughs> And then select toys, board game, uh, toys that imitate another item. <laughs> so I guess, you know, the Barbie school bus or something, a doll and a construction toy, all jigsaw puzzles and all video games. We can look at this and we can see exactly all of the areas of the economy that are desperately dying, that are calling these liberal ministers every day and saying, you're not getting my vote ever again because you have destroyed my business. And they, they hope that they can convince you otherwise. They want to bribe you. They want to pull the wool over your eyes. Now, I'm not telling you not to enjoy the GST being off your food and all that stuff, and I'm certainly not trying to tell you how to spend your money. But I am absolutely imploring you to see it for what it is. To see it for the smokescreen that it really is. And cast your vote accordingly. And if you really want to send a message, I wouldn't spend any money. I would keep up not buying a thing because that is what is going on they know they've got some numbers they come down the pipe the economy is beginning to bottom out businesses are running out of money they can't support them anymore they're calling in those covid loans and it's all going to pot and if they don't get you to buy something over christmas then they're going to buy february we're going to be probably downgraded on our credit rating or something like that Simply because, or he'll be talking about how he's got, you know, he sold another mine to a foreign interest. Because there's no money being stimulated in the economy. And if you were ever wondering if that were true or not true, all you have to do is read the list of things that they're taking the GST off of. Anyway, I know that I get a little bit passionate, but I don't like these tactics. I don't like the man who will say to you that your idea to cut out the carbon tax and save the economy is a bad one, but I can cut out the little tiny GST if you buy specific items and you do it in a specific time, and then in the end, I'll send you a two, nice shiny $250 check, and you know everything will be you know hunky-dory, but really it won't be. When really what has to happen is we all need a break on the carbon tax because that's the one that's the single largest driving of, driver of inflation in this country. All right, I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you for listening. I'll talk to you next time.